Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and this is question number three from the January 2014 International A Level C34 paper, which is the old specification. This is a question which is um, related to work in the P3, um, and um, yeah, so it's got something to do with algebraic fractions, especially part B. Part A is just like um, leading on to part B. I'll put part B on the next page. So it's kind of something to do with integration. The P3 style of integration and algebraic fractions. Okay, so part A is, is basically a type of question where you've got to um, compare coefficients to find the values of these and um, these constants in this identity. So you have an identity. So we know that in, the, in an identity, the left hand side and the right hand side are identical. So what we can do is to to find the values of A, B, C, and D without having to actually expand everything. Okay, you could actually do that. You could expand the brackets and have things, you know, or, or you know, and um, compare one side to the other. Or you could, in your in your head even, you could say, all right, let's look at the x cubed terms. And let's see on the left-hand side and the right-hand side what how many x cubed we have. They must be the same because this is identical. So on the left-hand side, we see we have four x cubed. So that's four. And on the right-hand side, well, if we think about, if we expand these brackets, I mean, these will not have any x cubed terms with them, the c and the d. But when I multiply out this bracket, I'll have ax times x squared will be ax cubed. Then ax times 4 ax times 4 will be 4ax, that won't be x cubed. b times x squared, that won't be x cubed. The only x cubed term will be a, ax, when I multiply ax times x squared. So that's going to be ax cubed. So we know that a is equal to 4 straight away. So we found a is equal to 4. So we know that a is equal to 4 straight away. So that's one answer, just by looking at the x cubed terms. Now, normally the easiest way to deal with this is to look at the two extremes, the highest power and the lowest power. The, the, that way you can find um, you know, those, those ones in the easiest way. So I'm going to look at the other extreme, which is a constant. So look to the highest power, which is x cubed. And now I'm going to compare the constants on both sides. Here the constant is 8. Now the constant on this side will be, there won't just be the d, there will be also, when I multiply the b by the 4 from this bracket, I'll have, you know, the b times 4 will be a constant, that's 4b, plus, and then you've got this d. Now I can't really do much with this at the moment, because um, both of these are unknown, but they it will build up, and we'll be able to find it. Let's look at the x squared terms now. The x squared terms, now on this side we have 2x squared, and on this 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 side, the x squared term, there will be nothing from these two, but when you do ax times, um, sorry, when you do b times x squared, you're going to get an x squared term. ax times x squared or x cubed, ax times 4 is going to be 4ax. b times x squared will be bx squared. That would be the only x squared term in this whole, you know, this, this side here. So we can say 2 is equal to b. That means we know that b is equal to 2. And because we know b is equal to 2, we can now take this. 8 is equal to 4 times 2 plus d. So 8, 8 is equal to 8 plus d. If we subtract 8 from both sides, we can say d is equal to 0. So we got the value of d as 0. Okay, and what we've got left to find now, we've got a, b, we've got to find c. So if we to, to find c, let's compare the x terms. Um, you've got the x coefficient here, 17. And when you expand this bracket, you have ax times 4, which is 4ax. And then you have, um, that's the only x term, and you have plus c. So 4, 4a, sorry, plus c. So you have 4a plus c. 4ax, so 4a plus c will be the x terms. Okay, and we already know what a is. a is 4. So we can say 17 is equal to 4 times 4 plus c. So 17 is equal to 16 plus c, so we can say, therefore, c is equal to 17 minus 16, which is 1. So now we have the values of a, b, c, and d. So what I can do is, I'll, I'll write it like this, so that for the next part of the question, it will be ready for us. So th that's all we have to do, just state these values. But I'm going to write it in this form. I can, I'm going to say 4x cubed plus 2x squared plus 17x plus 8 is identical to a, which is 4x plus b, which is 2, times x squared plus 4, 
time plus c which is one plus d one x plus d which is zero so we can say that that is how i can write this okay so there's the answer to that first part of the question all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this i've just wrote copy it because i think we're going to use it for part b because part b says hence find the integral of this expression so let me just paste it over here so we have this so we're going to use what we just found so what i'm going to do when it says hence that means using what you just found okay using what you just found so we're going to integrate this between the limits of four and one and express our answer in this form so what i'm going to do is i'm going to rewrite this as what we found it to be which is 4x plus 2 times x squared plus 4 um, um, plus x over okay so i've written this in this form over x squared plus 4 so I want to integrate all of this with respect to x and limits 4 and 1 so now what we can see here is this is a common factor in these two so I can split this into two fractions so let me split this into two fractions I have 4x plus 2 times x squared plus 4 divided by x squared plus 4 okay plus x divided by x squared plus 4 I've got to integrate that with respect to x between the limits of 4 and 1 now we can see here that this is a common factor in this part of the fraction they can cancel out this is like x squared plus 4 times 1 so it's a common factor in the numerator and the denominator so this can become the integral of 4x plus 2 those are cancelled out then I got plus x over x squared plus 4 integrating with respect to x now here we have another situation in, in for these two terms no problem we know how to integrate 4x we know how to how to integrate 2 very easy that's from p2 all right that's from p1 even in fact but with the limits p2 now x over x squared plus 4 that is something where we can look and recognize the reverse of the chain rule we know when we integrate something of the form we know that for example if we in, if we differentiate lin of x we get 1 over x when we differentiate lin of x with respect to x we get 1 over x as our answer so the integral of 1 over x is basically going to be the lin of the modulus of x okay i'll explain i've, I've gone through the reason why it's that in a separate video why it's a modulus but we don't need to go into that too too much detail now but basically any time you find a situation like this where you have a fraction and the numerator is of the form of the differential of the denominator so here we have x and here we have the something of the form of the differential of the denominator we can use this lin of the modulus of x in in order to integrate so here we have the numerator and the denominator the numerator is of the form of the differential of the denominator if you differentiate the denominator you're going to get 2x which is of the right order it's like you know of the numerator it's x to the power of one so i can use that to integrate this so this is the type of question where you can do that so i'm going to integrate keep the square bracket here now because i'm going to start integrating and i've got limits so i've got to keep the square bracket and put the limits at the end so i'm going to integrate 4x which is remember this is a simple type of integration you add one to the power so we can remember this is 4x to the power of one becomes to the power of two divide by the new power plus a constant just gains the x term now this is going to become and this is how i like to write my work It'll be x times the lin of the modulus of x squared plus four but then we have to divide by the differential of what's inside the function which is 2x and you can see that's how you know that the reverse of the chain rule is working when that constant cancels out okay and then you've got your limits between four and one all right so if you want to be sure because this is like a half lin modulus of x squared plus 4. If you want to be sure that you've done it correctly, if you differentiate this, you're going to have 1 over 2 times 1 over x squared plus 4. Then you multiply by the differential of what's inside the function using the chain rule, which gives you 2x. And you end up with the x is cancelling out, and you're left with x over x squared plus 4. So differentiating that gives you exactly what we started with, so we know that we've integrated it correctly okay so that's just like a you can say a little check to make sure that we have used the reverse of the chain rule okay properly 
All right, so these cancelling out is a sign that it's worked. Right, now we can substitute the value of 4 and then 1 into this. So we're going to have, this, is, this cancels out with that, that gives you 2. So you've got 2 times 4 squared plus 2 times 4 plus the lin of, you're going to have the modulus of 4 squared plus, um, 4 squared 16 plus 4, which is 20 over 2 minus, and then we're going to put 1 into these, so you're going to have um, 1, you're going to have 2 times 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus the lin of the modulus of, if you put 1 in here, you're going to get 5 over 2. Okay, so now we have to simplify this. Let's just, this is going to give me 2 times 16, which is 32. 2 times 4, which is 8. Then we got um, plus a half lin of the modulus of 20 minus 2, okay, um, minus another 2, okay, and minus lin of the modulus of 5 over 2, okay. Now we want to have it in the end p plus lin q. So we want this to be the same number. So I think you can make this into a 5 here. So that's 40. 32 plus 8 is 40, 40 minus 4 is 36, is 36, that's right, 36, okay, that's correct, yeah, 32 plus 4, 36, then I have a half times the lin, or I don't need to put the modulus anymore because I know that um, this is positive, so that's, four, that's lin 4 times 5, okay, um, half lin 4 times 5, Okay, um, hold on, let's have a look. I want to express this as lin, is that lin 5? That's 5, if I put 4 in there, that's 16 plus 4, that's 20. Yeah, okay, I want to express it as lin 5, let's see how that will work. So that's plus a half, lin 4 plus 5, minus lin, a half, Sorry, a half lin five. A half lin five. In fact, no, I'll, I'll I'll leave it like this because I can combine these two together. You see, all right, that's going to be lin twenty and lin five. So I've got thirty six plus. Now I've got a half times. Take the half as common, and I've got lin twenty minus lin five. So I can use the law of logarithms here, and I can divide these two. That will give me the lin of 20 over 5, which is the lin of 4. So I've got 36 plus a half times the lin of 20 over 5. That's using the laws of logarithms. Okay, which gives me 36 plus a half lin of 4. And how do you want to express it? P plus lin Q. So we don't want to have the half here. So what we can do is we can use the power law. 36 plus lin 4 to the power of a half, which is the square root of 4, so you end up with 36 plus lin 2. So there's the answer to the question, 36 plus lin 2. Um, yeah, so that, that's how we dealt with that question there. Um, I hope that was clear. So we used here um, part A to split up this into two fractions into a form that's easy for us to integrate. Um, this is integrated using the reverse of the chain rule, which is something which is new in P3, okay, which used to only be in P4 before. And this is the type where you have a fraction, the numerator being of the form of the differential of the denominator. So lin is called into play there. And then we substitute the values in and then use the laws of logarithms to simplify it. Okay, so there we have the answer to question number three, sorry, part B of... January 2014, C34. This is a P3 style question. So I'll save you under that. Other questions from this particular paper, when I get around to answer them, will be in this playlist over here. Other questions from um, P3, I'll, I'll put this all under integration, is going to be found in this um, playlist over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.